in the first video by default okay we say that s is equals to pi j theta and where theta is equals to 0 to minus 2 pi all right and we draw the graph the graph clockwise direction where the zero is over here s okay why is the zero over here is because if you have a transfer function u of s is equals to s all right then you actually didn't move you didn't move this point all right it's always the same like this okay it's exactly the same plot okay over here but you have s plus a in this case right now the zeros is in fact not s anymore it's not at zero anymore it's, it's in fact at minus a because the roots of this function is minus a plus a is equals to zero which is the meaning of the zeros right and the poles I mean in terms of zero whatever things that make the numerator zero is called a zero and therefore if s is minus a then I'm just simply writing the zeros over here instead of here you get what I mean? because if g of s is equals to s what makes this equals to zero is simply when s is equals to zero and therefore I draw this thing over here and therefore this graph is always the same as over here if on the other hand if I have a transfer function g of s is equals to s plus a then for this for this transfer function to be zero then s must be minus a and therefore i draw a zero over here instead of here so i'm not going to draw over here so if i were to clean it out this is simply that okay so for the s plus a case this is the graph for the s domain and for the l for the for the transfer function domain g of s then i'm going to plot i'm going to shift this minus a all the way to the origin so in other words I'm gonna shift this point to this point I'm gonna shift this point to somewhere this point so in other words I'm gonna shift the whole graph by a and this also explains the mapping which we have um, derived earlier so in other words I'm mapping this point over to this side I'm mapping this point over to this side and so on and so forth and they are still going in the clockwise direction okay this is for zero and this is the trend for the zero and the angle between them the angle for a double here and here this angle is the same as the angle from here to here and this we have to exploit the angle um, so called angle criteria I would say okay angle will never change for for when you map from the s domain to the laplace domain so i hope that this explained well for the s domain and the laplace domain okay now what if this so we know that the zeros is simply to translate to translate the the whole graph from one point to another point to translate in the real axis right now what about poles one over s okay i'll not go into details on deriving it just want to prove to you that not prove but rather than show you and therefore in order to, to show you this is still the same real and imaginary 1 over s the graph is simply still here and then the post is over here correct for the transfer function of g of s is equals to 1 over s okay so when I map I'm still mapping it the same thing over here when the origin is always is it didn't move at all the origin didn't move okay however when i translate over here i'm actually talking about making it smaller or bigger so instead of this shape all right i may actually have a a slightly smaller radius or slightly um, larger area okay radius okay and therefore to prove to you Okay, just, just a quick proof is that we know that s is equals to rej theta 1 over s is equals to 1 over rej theta Alright, I'm simply subbing s as this one Okay, and then I rearrange as 1 over r times 1 over ej theta And I can rewrite e 1 over ej theta as e minus j theta They are the same thing Okay, and therefore I can re-represent as 1 over r times e minus j theta Okay, the two differences that I want to identify is that we have changed from R, uh, this is the zero, right? And this is the pole. 
we have changed from r to 1 over r we have changed from ej theta to e minus j theta this ej theta will determine the clockwise the clockwise direction which we have shown you earlier this e minus j theta will determine the anti-clockwise direction all right but still with the understanding of from 0 to minus 2 pi okay i'll not prove to you this this understandings all right for 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 the e minus j theta because from the ej theta and this 0 to minus 2 pi you can actually derive that it's actually going in the anti-clockwise direction for e minus j theta you can try it out your own i will not i will not prove to you all right and then this e minus j theta if you still remember back the Euler's formula is simply r cosine theta minus j sine theta so you're going to use this formula and derive what you have derived for in the first video so you can just take it as a practice if you need in the future that um, if you want to prove my e minus j theta you can just go to the first video uh, in this playlist and then you can just use the same same method to prove but so therefore in in this case for the zero is a clockwise in the for the pose is the anti-clockwise all right so i'll just show you this this understanding okay and therefore for this one is simply the chord it, it actually the differentiate the um not differentiate but rather than making it enlarge or or minimize all right this is actually um one over r or this green color is one over r okay example in the s domain we know that it is it is still using s is equals to r e j theta if r is equals to 5 then we have 5 e j theta which is the radius 5 okay so for example if i have to put it over here this is 5 but because it is a pole and we know that r is equals to 5 right 1 divided by 5 is simply 0.2 so when you actually trans translate to a pole, actually minimize this this graph over here to this green green one over here. So I when I plot in the clockwise, I'll plot in the anti-clockwise. So for example, if I were to plot this point, I map it over here. And then if I were to plot this point, I'll map it over here. Okay, if I were to plot this point, I'll map it over here so I'm gonna plot in terms of that all right if let's say instead of 5 I'll, this radius is 0 0.5 or r is equals to 0 0.5 and therefore in this case 1 divided by 0 0.5 is simply is simply 2 and therefore in this case if this thing all right this this thing now this this radius is 0 0.5 then 2 is simply you're gonna enlarge so this this thing over here it's two radius. Okay, so graphically I will show you. So this is the plot for the pose. If you take a look, which is what I'm talking. It shows mappings from S to L of S when L of S is a single pole. In this first example, L of S equals ten over S. So the L of S has a pole at the origin, as shown on the left. As and therefore, as you can see, you are actually plotting each of the point yeah, if you are going in this direction you are going in the transfer function domain you are going to go in this and um, anti-clockwise direction okay and this is very important okay this is very important and also that the angle between them for example this angle and this angle because if you are mapping all right if you are mapping this point this point is actually to this point this angle are the same, okay? This angle are the same. I just I know proof, but I'll just tell you that they are the same. Okay, they are the same. Okay, you can own self go and draw a graph, and then you won't tell proof, but it's pretty straightforward. And therefore, from this, I would I, I have actually proved to you, okay? For pole one over s in the s domain, is this case? If you were to translate in the trans transfer function domain, all right, g of s is equals to one over s you're gonna actually minimize it all right or maybe enlarge it maybe much more enlarge in the, in the size okay and then this is going in the clockwise this is going in the anti-clockwise all the angles are the same as we have proved just now okay however instead of 
having 1 over s now, uh, my transfer function is 1 over s plus a. If that's the case, then instead of this pose is being here, my pose is being here. Alright, it's minus a. Because what makes the pose 0 is minus a. If this whole thing is equal to 0, then it's going to go infinity. And what happened things that made the equation infinity is actually cause the pose. Okay, if you still remember. And therefore, this is the pole over here. So this, this thing is gone already, alright? It's for the location for s plus a. Okay. So if I were to plot it into the domain of the transfer function domain, or g of s, okay, I'll just shift in terms of a. Alright, if I were to shift in terms of a, this graph will also change, right? Because this, this graph is only for 1 over s. If I were to shift, then I'll have something moving in the A. Alright, maybe I should, yeah. I'll move in terms of A distance. This is for example A, then I'm going to move in the A distance. So that my new graph is something, something like that. Okay, okay. So this is the new graph I would say. And then I'll just simply plot, okay, plot each of this point. So how, how do I become here, alright, how do I become here, is I simply map, right, I map this point to this point, I map this point to this point, so I go in the clockwise direction, the pose is going to move in the anti-clockwise direction, and therefore, this is, this is it, lah, right, and the angles between, between this one, alright, maybe I should choose a different color, the angles between this, and this, is also the same, and so the angle criteria is still still quite quite strong. The criteria is strong for the poles and the zeros. And therefore this is a, just a brief understanding for the zero because if you want to prove is it's kinda long. Okay? For the poles, okay, not zero them. Alright, so this is just the proof for the poles uh, in terms of the anti clockwise direction and their um, um the understanding of in other words, a simple zero, alright? This is S domain. We are going to move the graph by A distance. Okay. For a simple pole, this is the S domain. You're going to move the graph by A distance, um, maybe at large. Okay. It may also be um, minimized. Alright. So you can translate and change the radius for a pole for the so this 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 whole thing right here is for the pole and for the zero is just simply translating simply <laughs> simply to translate only okay so i hope that this is clear and r is simply the the radius lah. okay if you don't understand anything, I'll highly suggest you watch con you watch back a few minutes of the video and repeat this video again to un to, to somewhat understand. Otherwise you can just go to the to this website. Alright. You can you can click alright mapping. Alright, you can click the, the mapping over here. I don't know whether you can see. Just click this and then you you would finally understand the mapping of a with, with a single zero, a single pole and and things like that. Okay? So in the next video, I'll talk about combining poles and zeros. Because in, in, in the previous videos and this video, we talk about the poles and the zeros. The common ground are that their angles will never change when you map. And do please note that we are still in the mapping. Alright, we are still in the mapping. Next video, I'll talk about mapping. And then from mapping, how do we become Nyquist? Alright, so next video, I'll talk about mapping. And then we will talk about um, how does this link to Nyquist plot. And then we can start on stability criteria. Alright, I'll see you there.